Welcome back to the nice episode of HS Appreciation Program. I'm your host Don Liu, and today, as I'm strolling down this lovely with this lovely weather outside, by the way, as I'm strolling down the East Coast area, and I unearth a hidden gem in the corner of the East Coast Road, and that is Keep True. Yeah, rumor came true. Rumor came true. Okay, yes. especially on their second floor of this house, it's just amazing. It's like mesmerizing. As I walk in here, I was completely bewildered by all these furnitures, embroideries, and everything just in this house just catch me so. It just kept my heart because it's just exactly somewhere that I would like to be if you're a cultural person, if you like culture and arts. And it's actually it's, this entire place is about poetic and culture, right? So, oh, yeah. Jab, you you always mistaken my gender, do you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> since you're coming to this place, you have to learn the rules and regulations of this place. Right? Okay, all right. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, I met the great host here, Mr. Raymond. Mr. Raymond is the、uh, host of this place, and he is the third generation of the Peranakan family, right? Um, third generation Singaporean to be exact. Okay. And in my family, my my paternal grandmother Lee Kim Joo, the founder of the Dumplings, ah,、uh, she's the Peranakan、um, character in our home actually. Right.、Yeah. Wow. So this entire house is your family heritage. Yeah,、Very、you can say so because we were brought up with um. We grew up with my, our grandmother when we were young, so everything that we know about Peranakan culture from the food, from the clothing, is mostly from her herself because she's the Peranakan in the family. Wow! So you, well, you, your mom is a purely Peranakan person, I would say. And also, by the way, I want to, I want you as a Peranakan. Can, can you give me a definition of in your, in your definition, in your view, what is a Peranakan? Because in my Personal understanding、uh, is Peranakan is a mix of let's say a local Chinese with a Malay, and that's by hearsay. That's、mm. what I understand. What it is,、yeah. uh, you are somewhere around there.、Okay. But if you want to be really very def-、uh, def- uh, defined,、uh, if you look at the definition of Peranakan, it comes from two root words Perana and Ana, which means to give birth and local born child. So the the meaning actually means locally born foreigners. So in fact, most Singaporeans actually fall in that category. So to me, when when I was younger, I always find that Peranakan this term is a a rather lousy term because anybody can be a Peranakan. But what makes us so unique and different is basically our lifestyle culture, because our ancestors were here for so many generations, and back then,、um, in the in the old times, it seems like. People are more open-minded to share things, accept new differences, and what happens is they start to have a local lifestyle that they will combine. Let's say I'm staying here as a Chinese, I will start to adapt good Malay culture, good Indian culture, or even good Indian food in cooking skills. I'll adapt it as part of my lifestyle, and over the years it has been refined until it is the culture of that what we know of today. Right. This、uh, entire it's it's like a cultural、um, assimilation with old generation Chinese, and but I would say upper class old generation Chinese because when you talk about with lifestyle, I believe only affluent people can afford a lifestyle, right? Yeah. In terms of you see、uh, all the、uh, let's say the furniture like you being very exquisitely you know、um, furnished and. Especially where where they, where they live, and also they, how they dress.、Mm-hmm. Somehow they have a different style. I mean, all those things need money. I would say、Correct. people who are Peranakan do that. Is it is it right to put it as let, let's say upper class Chinese yeah, people halfway there, but not right there? Okay. Because before the World War Two,、mm-hmm. most of the Peranakan Chinese were were quite well to do.、Mm-hmm. Of course, there are some middle class people around too. But after the World War Two ended, a lot of the Peranakan Chinese men, the Babas,、uh, they may have like died along the way or had、uh, due to、uh, killing or due to illness during the period. That somehow、um, their wealth starts to decline as time passes. So what we have, which is very strong in our Peranakan culture, would mainly be, I think, the food and the clothing. And maybe a part of the furnitures, 
because there are some families they still own a lot of beautiful furnitures and try to assimilate with part of their modern uh, furnishing in their homes which can be uh, a very interesting character to, to the look actually. Speaking of that, I've discovered all these things in your house and yeah. these are precious looking like look at yeah. this. One of this is like beautifully like this is embroidered, embroidery, right? Yeah, this is actually Pranakan beadwork. Okay. It's actually all embroidered with beads. Beads. Yes. And wow. in fact, this shoe that you're having here now is a rather modern shoe mm -hmm. that is done using Japanese glass beads. So one pair of shoes there's about two thousand beads. But if you are working with beads that the Pranakans used to do, like you saw from some of the uh, embroideries on the wedding day. Or even the shoes like this, which is done with very small beads, a pair that's about 10,000 over beads actually. 10,000 yes. over Five beads. times the amounts, the difference. And with that, like, this is very small, it's rather really small, right? Yeah, but, but if you compare, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there's a, even, even if it doesn't worth 10,000 dollars, but the, the workload definitely is 10,000 something, like <laughs> maybe 10,000. Sweat, <laughs> yeah. But uh, for info, like uh, nowadays with our artisans who are doing with the Japanese glass beads, it may take them about one week to finish a pair of beaded shoe. But if you're working with the small beads like this one over here, which has ten thousand beads, our artisans about four or five hours a day. Uh, it may take them about like five to seven weeks to complete a pair of beaded shoes like this. Yeah. So if you look at this template, which is done with the small beads. Look at the back. Look at all the stitches. Oh, wow. It's no wonder why the bead work is so durable. You can scratch it and it doesn't fall off so easily. Very different from the, the beaded shoes that we get from Vietnam nowadays, where one string has many beads in it. If a string broke, a lot of this will fall off. Mm -hmm. But this, it's very hardy that it will fall off. So this bead was literally being stitched on individually, piece yeah. by piece and with very judicious choice of colors and size mm -hmm. and so you have all this layout design being painted down in the first place and then you have to execute it by cho choose the right material to realize that yeah. it is really really intricate so and what, what do you want? well <laughs> Well, since I'm here, I think I could give it a try. At least I could have a scratch experience about yeah, this, right? Because <laughs> over here in, uh, in our place, uh, some of our guests would want to experience what is Pranakan people all about, what's so difficult about it. So we do small little trinkets like this. Is that a ring? Yeah, there's a bit of right. ring. So here are some examples of completed ones. That's yeah. Cool. So what we're going to do today is we may want to let you experience how to beat some uh, a small little project which is a simple necktie clip. Okay. Yeah, with this finding over here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's really interesting. You see, the application is not only for shoes. This beadwork can be applied to many different. Yeah. Because in the early days, they make them into purses, pouches, uh, wall hanging decorations and stuff. So uh, back then, they actually are very much into such people actually. Very interesting. What kind of young like? Because you see, all the culture thing has to go with time, right? Mm. So, what do you think would be the most potential, let's say, something that speaks to the young something generation? For Instagram. for Instagram, okay, Instagram is a pop culture, but I'm talking about maybe, let's say, for young generations people. What would be, what do you think is the most suitable applications for applying beads work? Uh, their handbags or their can, phone, their phone case. Yes, you can also if you have the correct fine things that can house the beadwork in it. You can actually, um, you even have Japanese ladies who did their beadwork project. They actually do the pillow ends, and they actually get someone in in Arab Street, a leather bag maker, to actually add on to it and make it into right. a nice small little pouch. For myself, I actually have uh, my own uh, passport holder, and I actually have a small little beadwork. Uh, uh, apply on to and pass that's, for them too. That's really yeah. customizable basically. Don't we need you now to demonstrate how to come Alright Dad, okay, oh. I am going to do that. Alright, let's go! Okay, before you start doing, this is the needles. Okay, yeah. look at this. This is 
mini and slender needles. And this, yeah. and I can imagine, you see how tiny this hole is. You have to use that thread mm -hmm. to basically go through that tiny hole. Well, that's a lot of work to do. Yeah, this is the thread. Okay. So now, oh, wow. your, your first task is to thread the string into the needle. Would you mind me to use some saliva? Yeah, you can. Okay, right. Look, I'm having this in my hand. This really gets me dizzy because it's too small. <laughs> okay, I'm trying my best. Okay, you might want to trim it first. Okay, I got it. I got trim, so I got cut them off first. Like, yeah, a very usually nice... I recommend you trim it, and if you okay. want, you can do, do the old grandmother style. You kiss it a little, mm -hmm. then you try to trim it. Okay. Few inches later. Oh my god, after 1,000 year later. 1,000 <laughs> years later. <laughs> it's in. So, yeah, so usually you pull, um, you'll do double thread. Okay, double thread me, mini. Yeah, um, so what we do is we usually pull the thread to about arm length. Oh, of course, okay, arm length. Yeah, okay. then we double up the thread. Okay. okay. And what we'll do next is we'll trim the thread a little bit. So, one grandmother's method of tying a knot is to put the thread and the needle in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. Put them together. Uh -huh. Twist them one, two, three. Okay. Then bring it inwards and pull. And you got a knot. Oh wow! Okay, that's so much efficient. I mean, I had some like I had to do some stitch stitching job for my um, socks, <laughs> and I always find it so um, it's such a struggle to do. It's <laughs> not because it's just either gonna end like halfway or just, like really really short. Okay. Okay. So all right. So now what I'm going to do is to go through. Okay. We don't go through. We have to bring it up from the from oh. the from the cloth first. Yes. So you'll be from. So I pick it up from this corner. I get it. And okay. then what we do is we cut the beads. Mm -hmm. And then we it to the box. And we I see. Okay. 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 Wow, okay. Look at that. Before that, I'm going to show this matrix over here. So what we do is, the design is actually printed on the matrix with colors and the layout. So all this color blocks refers to the beads, individual beads where it's gonna locate it. And so we're just gonna fulfill all this like little squares one by one oh, with the right yeah. color. That's like a QR code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like QR code. Maybe we can make a beads QR code for fashion <laughs> <laughs> train. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I'm gonna go for this, okay? I'm gonna try my best to be the best. So now you're supposed to put the needle mm -hmm. from at this point. Mm -hmm. So from below. Okay. You have to so it. now, so we do it horizontally. Yeah, so row by row. Row by. Oh, so it's this. So you put from this corner of the box diagonally to the other corner of the box. So it's like a Z, like Z a slant side. over there, like, like a Z. Okay. So it's slant from here. So you put from your needle from here. I got it. Okay. So it's from. Oh my god, so you have to find this. It's really, oh my god, that's a lot of job to do. Yes, I think I found it right. Right? Yeah, correct. So pull it up. Put it up. And then I need the gold to pick up. Yeah. The next color, which is this blue. 2,000 years later. Look at that. My baby. It really takes a lot of time to do this. Um, but I rather find this process therapeutic because you really allows you to stay focused on one piece of um, art and you just you you feel really really rewarding after you've done one of this because you if really spend a lot of time. So can you. Yeah, if Don can do this, so can you because I can tell you I'm not a I'm not a very really really patient person, but this really helped me to improve my patience. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt I felt very rewarding. 
and thank thanks, you. Raymond. You're thanks. welcome. Thank yeah, you. thank you for bringing this experience. Okay, that's it for today. It's a long day in this Veronica house, and it's just. I feel like a little Baba. <laughs> and if you would like to be a Nyonya or Baba, welcome to this place. And it is located at 111 East Coast Road. And, and thanks, Freeman, again. And if you like us and if you like this program, give us a thumbs up. And also make sure to follow us uh, for all our social medias. And we are we're gonna put the feature, we're gonna put our social media down below. And if you like to visit Kim Ju, we'll also we'll put their social media. I think you guys have the Facebook and yeah. their website, right? We're gonna feature this links down below. And that's it. Bye!